Hi, I'm Joan Kang Shin. Welcome to Our World's Professional Development Program. These videos will help teachers improve their classroom practice and help their students to get the most out of our world. The video you are about to watch will explore some of the best practices for teaching English to young learners. First, we have to think about the characteristics of children to develop the right approach. How would you describe young learners? From my experience, the way a teacher describes her young learners depends on the day. When I was teaching young learners, on a bad day, I probably thought, young learners are hyper, can't sit still, too talkative, easily distracted, and just plain silly. But on a good day, I probably thought, young learners are energetic, spontaneous, social, curious, and fun. Whether it is a good day or a bad day, the descriptions reflect the same characteristics of young learners. Take a look. The characteristics are actually the same. The only difference is the way you interpret your student's behavior. So, instead of trying to fight against their natural tendencies, teachers can be more effective by utilizing these characteristics in the classroom. Although these characteristics can make teaching children challenging and even difficult at times, they can also make the young learner classroom joyful and rewarding. Now, let's explore the best practices for teaching English to young learners. Make your classroom enjoyable and interesting for young learners. Capture their attention with brightly colored and captivating visuals. There is nothing more captivating than National Geographic images to engage children. Use these two-page spreads that open each unit to get your students engaged and excited to learn. All of the photographs and artwork in our world will capture your students' attention and interest. Be sure you incorporate lots of activities that young learners find fun and interesting. Children love singing songs, listening to stories, and playing games. Watch how excited these students are to play games that help them practice speaking and spelling vocabulary. He's diving into the water. Where is he? Unscramble the words. S -W -I -M -M -I -N -G -O -R. Ding, 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 ding. Swimming pool. He's diving into a swimming pool. Make your classroom active and hands-on. Children are kinesthetic learners. That means they like to move their bodies and move around the room. It also means they like to learn by touching and manipulating objects. They learn by doing. They need to be active and have lots of hands-on activities that encourage them to interact with objects and visuals. If possible, bring in real objects and incorporate projects that allow students to produce their own creations that further the learning process. Doing artwork, crafts, posters, and projects are great ways for learners to be active and make things with their own two hands. Make your classroom supportive and scaffolded. In other words, set your students up for success. First, be supportive emotionally and encourage them. Praise them. Give them all love and attention equally. You should never have favorites. And remember that every student can learn, just not on the same day or the same way. With that in mind, Always think in terms of what your students can do, not what they can't do, and make their success your responsibility. Teachers have to scaffold their students' learning process. But what is scaffolding? Usually the term is used to describe the support structure needed to construct a building. Take a look at this picture. The scaffolding is the frame around the building. The construction workers can stand on the scaffolding in order to build or repair a building. As teachers, we have to provide the scaffolding to our students in order to help them construct knowledge or learn language effectively. B 
be sure you break the task down into small, achievable steps and give them a model to follow. Our world teaches language step by step, but the teacher still has to take the time to make sure students have plenty of ways to show their comprehension of the new language. Notice how the teacher is checking comprehension as students listen and point. Now, pay attention. I am going to, to tell you, a member of the family, and I want you to point. For example, if I say, father, you have to point the father. Now, point to the mother. The mother, point to the mother. Perfect. What are the parents? Perfect. Teachers can also check comprehension of words by asking students to give examples from their own lives. How many brothers do you have? How many sisters do you have? Teachers may use different techniques to help learners understand English, such as using visuals, gestures, or body movement and realia. You can make words comprehensible by using graphic organizers like charts, Venn diagrams, mind maps, or by using visual cues like this teacher. To scaffold your student's ability to produce language and complete activities, it is important to give them a model first. Watch this teacher give a model before students start the activity. You are going to work with your partner Okay, so for example, Camila is working with Max. I asked Camila, Camila, who is this? Who's this? He's a brother. The brother. It's a baby. It's a sister. Make your classroom meaningful and purposeful. Teachers should avoid explicit grammar teaching for young learners and expose children to language in authentic and meaningful contexts. Engaging them in meaningful and purposeful activities will help students recognize language patterns. As Lynn Cameron wrote, children see foreign language from the inside and try to find meaning in how the language is used in action, in interaction, and with intention, rather than from the outside as a system and form. In action, means learning by doing. In interaction means through social activities. And with intention means the activities have a real purpose and students have real reasons to use the language. Teachers should provide plenty of opportunities to practice the language. Using repetition and recycling is important when working with young learners. Luckily, if there is a fun song, children will beg you to sing it again. And if there's an interesting story, they will ask you to tell it again. Repeating is a natural part of children's learning process. Recycling is also important to improve young learners' ability to understand the new language structures and use them correctly. Usually people use the word recycling to describe reusing trash, for example, we often recycle paper in order to use it again. When teachers recycle language, they use it again in another context. For example, in one lesson, students may learn vocabulary for different clothes. A teacher may recycle this language by teaching about the weather and asking students what to wear when it's hot and sunny or when it is cold and snowy. Recycling helps students increase their proficiency by getting them to use the language in a new context. This makes the learning process more authentic and meaningful for them. So, instead of presenting language as isolated grammar structures, present language in a meaningful context. Make sure you provide plenty of opportunities for students to practice the language through both repetition and recycling and give them a real purpose to communicate with each other in English. Make your classroom connected to the real world. For young learners, real world content connects learners to the language in a meaningful and purposeful way. If there is a real and personal connection to the context, young learners will be more motivated. 
Using real-world content in the classroom will motivate and engage learners and also prepare them to become successful adults in the world. Give them a chance to see our fascinating world and explore their place in it. What could be more engaging than exploring nature, the environment, and animals? And how about different people and cultures we share our planet with? Be sure you always bring different cultural materials into the classroom because your young learners will grow up using English to speak to people from countries around the world. Also, make sure you teach them how to express their own culture in English. As you explore the world through National Geographic, it will be a natural step to connect the content with students' lives. Making the local home culture connection will help young learners see the relevance of the content and give them the motivation to learn and use English in authentic ways. As you apply these approaches to your classroom, you will be more effective teaching English to young learners. Let me leave you with a quote from Plato. It exemplifies the kind of approach we should take with young learners. Do not train children to learning by force and harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds, so that you may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. Bring out the best in your young learners by creating a classroom environment that is engaging and motivating for children. Using National Geographic materials is a great start. Our world materials give you real-world content and present language in meaningful contexts that will engage your young learners and scaffold their learning process. But remember, it is up to you, the teacher, to bring these materials to life and make learning active, social, meaningful, and most of all, fun. Take advantage of your young learner's energy and curiosity, and your class will become a joyful and rewarding experience for all. This is our world. Everybody's got a song to sing.